from coast to coast and around the world, it's time to praise the Lord. on Praise the Lord from the vacation capital of the world, exciting Central Florida, as we bring you anointed pastors, evangelists, teachers, authors, and other special guests with testimonies and teachings and music to glorify God as we lift up Jesus Christ as Lord. Hello and welcome to Praise the Lord. We are so glad that you're with us today. Many of you don't know why you tuned in today, but God had a specific reason for you. We have a great, great guest today, and we also have great music, so you're going to enjoy this time. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, I thank you for this amazing time that you've called us all together, including all the viewers who are tuning in, maybe not even knowing why this moment they're here tuned in. But you had an appointment, a divine appointment today. And so God, we bless you this day for this time that we can hear your word, that we can be provoked in our thinking, that we can come to you, oh God, and we can say, here we are. Tell us what's on your heart, O oh God. And we are attentive to you this day. So we bless you in the name above all names, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, we're going to go right now to some very special music, a song that many of you have heard and know called, He Touched Me.
back. We're so glad you're back with us. Uh, today we have a very special guest. We have Lee Valentine with us. She has made a remarkable hit in QVC and has been on for 14 years with her skincare products that are truly amazing, but there's more than just the products behind Lee. There's a whole story of how she got to where she is that is truly amazing and will give you a chance to lift up your heart because many of you have gone through some tough stuff and you're looking for what's next, God? How do I re-engage in life? Maybe I've been down and I need to get a new facelift. Um, how do I do that? A new life <laughs> That's lift. That's right. And, uh, and Lee, uh, we welcome you. Thank be, you, be Pastor. With us. It's, it's so, so good, good to, to be you. here. The, hello, everyone. Good to be here. So great to have you with us. Tell us a little bit about your, your story. I know that you've been on uh, QVC for many, many years, and, yes. and uh, many people have been helped through the very formulas that you created yourself. Yes. And probably, have, I think you've told this story 700 times uh, in live appearances, but yes. one more time, oh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, it's been an interesting journey. You know, I grew up in St. Louis, Missouri, and my dad was a doctor. He was a surgeon. And we grew up very religious. We went to church for one hour on Sunday morning, and we really didn't know the Lord. But I know there was a place that my grandparents had in my life. They were ones that really prayed and prayed and prayed. And they were Baptist, and I just began to cry out to God, even as a little girl. I was so hungry for God. And finally, when I was in college, I was on drugs and just a big mess. But God visited me one night when mm. I overdosed in Miami, and it was a very, very horrible situation where literally I saw in the spirit realm and I saw black spiders fighting to pull my spirit out of my body into the depths of hell. Mm. I was 18 years old, 19 years old, and I was on my way to hell and I didn't even know it. But it was that night I cried out and I said, Jesus, if you're real, I'm going to die tonight. And this is one time I really don't want to die. I need you to save me. And I fell into a deep sleep, and it was a few hours later that I woke up, walked out in the patio, and I looked at everything, and suddenly I knew that God was real. Mm. A week later, I'm at University of Tampa. A college professor comes up to me. She said, I need to talk to you. And she said, Lee, what was going on with you one week ago on a Saturday night? She said, God woke me up. The Holy Ghost woke me up. God Almighty intervened. She said, I prayed all night for you till I got a release about five or seven in the morning. But she said, I knew that you were going to die and it was very, very serious. She invited me to her home and she cooked for me this big Southern dinner. A college professor mm. that was getting ready to retire. Wow. She could have risked everything. And she told me about Jesus, how Jesus had healed her of cancer. They cut her open. They couldn't find any cancer. Mm -hmm. And she said, Lee, God has his hand on you, and he's got big things in store for you. And I don't know who's listening today, but I know that God has had you to turn into this show. Because if God can take me and turn everything around in my life, not just once, but many, many times, he can turn things around for your life when we obey God and we obey his principle and we listen to his voice and obey his commandments. God will turn your life around. Even recently, I began to seek the Lord because, you know, I spent 14 years on QVC, but that wasn't God's calling. That wasn't God's best for me. God has called me into the ministry and he's called me to preach and teach his word. Mm, now, I know that you are... Um, you and I had a little bit of time to talk earlier, and hearing the voice of God is your passion. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I, I've just, the last, even the last year, I was very, very sick, and I began to seek the Lord. And through that, God just said, the places that I've brought a curse on my life and the judgment of God on my life was the places that I did not hear the voice of God, wait on God, 
Mm. Wait on God mm. and obey Him at every point. He says, if you'll hearken diligently to my voice and not the voice of the enemy, not the voice of the world, not the voice of all of these movies and all of this junk out there and all of Egypt pulling on you every single day. But if you will hearken diligently to the voice of God, Pastor Jim, then he says all these blessings will come on your life. He said, you'll have more than enough in your home. You'll have more than enough for your children, more than enough for your grandchildren. You will be blessed in the field. You'll be blessed everywhere you go. But when you don't obey God's voice, you are cursed. And I can't begin to tell you, they found all this black mold in my house. I've been very sick from mold the last two years. I didn't know what it was, Pastor. And I began to see my finances under attack. I lost a major lawsuit. I just begin to see places that I did not obey God to the, to the utmost purity, to the mm -hmm. utmost degree. Mm -hmm. And I begin to see these curses mm -hmm. come on me. And it can mm -hmm. happen. We can say, oh, but I'm blood bought and I'm a Christian and I live by faith. Hey, listen, if you live by faith, you're going to obey God at every point. Mm -hmm. And so recently I've seen God just begin to turn things around. Boom. He showed me what was wrong with me physically, showed me what was wrong in my house, mm -hmm. showed me what was wrong in the ministry, showed me what was wrong in my company. And so I cannot thank God enough. He is so good to me. He's always taken care of me. Mm, now, and he will take care of every person. Absolutely. Now, when, uh, before we turn to your company a little bit, yeah. and some of the things, uh, let's just stay one more second on this voice. Yeah. Uh, there's lots of competing voices that people, our viewers, are hearing. Exactly. Today. There's voices from the evil one. There's voices of busyness. There's voices of well-meaning people, but not so well-meaning from the enemy's perspective. Exactly. How do you zone out certain ones and know you're listening to the voice of God? That is a good question. The, the way that I've really learned this lately is just to really cry out to God. Jeremiah 33, 3 says, if you will cry out to God and seek him with all of your heart, not with your mind, but your heart, your heart, really cry out to him and seek him and pray and seek him. He says that he will show you great and mighty things that you know not of. He'll hear your cry. And I, I've had to learn that it is just waiting on him because many times you'll hear something, but you need to weigh it out. You need to pray about it. You need to seek godly counsel. And I know that God spoke to me years ago after my divorce, and he said, Lee, I've called you to start a skincare company. This is a prime example where God spoke, but I did not do it God's way. God spoke, start a company. He said, I'm going to deliver you out of this curse. I'm going to deliver you out of what you went through in your divorce. I'm going to provide millions of dollars for you. But he said, do it my way, not your way, but my way. That's what God's looking for, that you will do things his way, his voice. Wait on him. If you're not sure, don't do anything. And so all of a sudden, these investors came along. I thought it was God. I thought it was God. And I took their money. And all of a sudden, I didn't even realize what I was signing. But years later, they came back to bring a curse on my life because mm. I did not wait on God for God to provide the money his way. Mm -hmm. His mm -hmm. way. So here I am famous on QVC, and I'm doing show after show, and I've got the number one beauty infomercial in the whole country. The number one beauty infomercial. It ran for seven straight years. We broke all records in sales. And it was on this product that God had given me called the non-surgical facelift. Mm -hmm. That's my name I, God gave me. And we sold over 5 million of those kits. Mm. I mean, you could, every time they'd buy airtime, we'd sell more kits, we'd sell more kits. And so God did that for me. But then years later, because I had not done it totally his way and I had signed this deal with these, these criminals, all of a sudden I'm in this lawsuit that I didn't even know and they got this big judgment against me mm -hmm. and they want to take over my whole company right wow. I'm like, wow. they can't do that oh yes they can I mean so it is just been if you will I'm, I'm writing this book on what not to do in business because I believe God wants us to be successful he's got blessings for us in real estate he's got blessings for us in business but you must do it God's way wait on God wait on God I mean, sometimes I'm at these conventions and these seminars and people tell me these things that they're going to go do. And you know in your spirit, it's not God. It's their mind. It's something they saw on television. They get this little whim. Wait on God. Otherwise, it's like my pastor says, you're on a wild goose chase, a wild one that doesn't produce any fruit. 
And I begin to see that if I would do things God's way, he would bring forth the fruit. You know, one time they were going to kick me off QVC. They said, Lee, you've been on here seven years. People don't want this product anymore. The phones aren't ringing. You're not making your numbers. Let me tell you, Pastor, if you don't make your numbers on QVC, that computer tells you if you're selling what you're supposed to by the minute. And you're competing. Well, I was competing with Joan Rivers and Melanie Griffin and Donna Mills and all these famous celebrities and, you know, uh, Marie Osmond. And they were all in the green room. Lori Grenier from Shark Tank, we started on there practically together. I grew up with her at QVC. 14 years we were in the green room. But if you don't get on front of that camera and you don't hear the voice of God and you take hold of those customers, can you can have millions, 50 million watching at any one time. You will lose your grip of what the Holy Ghost wants for you, what God wants for you. And so I, I thought, well, we're done. We're done here. But God said, no, you're not done here. And I began to walk and pray and walk and pray. And he took me to a Jewish girl who began to counsel me. And she, I consulted with her for a whole day. And she said, Lee, every time you go in front of that camera, there's millions of new viewers. You forget that. You think, oh, everyone's already seen this product. I'm done. And she said, you need to get back to the basics. What does this product do? Why did you create it? And what is it going to do for them? Are they going to feel firmer, tighter toned skin? Absolutely. So they put me, they gave me a prime time spot, no pressure. <laughs> and I'm in the green room with Joan Rivers. And I was telling her my story that I have to make my numbers tonight. My agent was there. And she was, let me tell you, she was so negative. She said, well, this is probably going to be your last show. <laughs> probably going to be your last show. I mean, she never really had a good thing to say to me. And I don't know why she was my agent, to be honest with you. She was the most negative person. So I had to overcome all this negative thing and think of what God said. Did God say it was my last show? No, he did not. He did not. And God is saying it's not over for you if you will hearken to his voice today. And I remembered everything that Jewish consultant said to me. And she wrote out bullet points for me and got me excited about my own formula again, my own product that God had given me, this miracle Firmalift that God had given me that firms, tightens, and tones the skin. And I went out there, and we were in prime time. The phones were practically in queue. The other person that was on before me, that means they had sold out, sold out. So I was like, help me, Lord. Is there even going to be an operator that's going to take these calls? But I got in front of that camera and I just sold and I sold and I just told my story. I walked out and I was just shaking. I could hardly take the mic off. I go in the green room and Joan Rivers said, what did you do? <laughs> I not only sold, I mean, we were selling like 30,000, 40,000 a minute. That's what sometimes I do that now in a month, but I could do that in a minute because of the power of television. And I was telling the girl backstage that, you know, television is so powerful. The devil can use it for evil, but God can use it for good mm -hmm. to visit people in their darkest hours. Mm -hmm. So I know what it's like to be on QVC and be successful. Mm -hmm. I know what it's like to make those numbers and to, to get the, the praise of men and to sell millions and millions and millions of dollars. But if you're not doing it God's way and God didn't call you to just continue just with that, then you have nothing but sorrow and you end up losing everything that God wants to bless right. you with. We got to uh -huh. do everything that God's called us to. Yes. And there's power in a story is what I heard you say. You got all excited again about your story exactly. and how you got there. So um, many people think that their story disqualifies them yes. from some of the things that God wants to do in their life when in fact it literally is the test that qualifies them. That's right. So in many ways the things you walk through um, were part of your qualification of continuing on uh, with the Lord. So it wasn't necessarily a closing of one season and a moving to a new season. It was a continuance. God's exactly. favor was still there. Exactly. And now he's given you an opportunity not only in being in front of TV and selling products, but in writing books. And now your first book was about um, coming through difficulties, wasn't right, it? Right, right. Tell us a little bit about that. I think that's available on Amazon also? Yes, it is. Okay. Well, I wrote a book about what I had gone through with my, my marriage married to a pastor, my divorce, and just the heartache of all that. Because when you marry out of the will of God and you do not wait on God, again, not obeying the voice of God. And you know, the Bible says, if you will obey the prophets, you will be blessed. And I did not obey the prophet's voice that came to me. I took it lightly. And I was warned not to marry this person. 
but I disobeyed. I thought, oh, well, you know, he loves me. We'll do all these great things in Israel. We'll minister together. But when you marry out of the will of God, it brings nothing but heartache and devastation. And that's probably for someone that's watching right now because it is so serious in this hour. You cannot afford a covenant with anyone, even a business, an alliance with a partner, anything. You've got to know that God sent them and that you're to align yourself with that person because you will see nothing but torment by not doing things God's way. There is that, the, the devil comes and he's speaking, but the Antichrist system is ever speaking and warring with this because Jesus is coming soon, church. He is coming so soon. He is right at the door. But we are to occupy and we are to continue to be extremely busy until the coming of the Lord and be busy with what God's told you to do. What is written in your book? What is God ordained for you to do? You know, I went to a school that taught on faith, a Bible school. But where people get off into this false faith message, I call it, is they run and they do what they want to do and they put God's name on it. Mm. What has God spoken to you to do? Mm. Go back, get quiet. That is the place that you know that God will honor and he will bless you and he'll pay your mortgage. But if you're out of the will of God, he's not going to pay your mortgage. He's not going to heal your marriage. He's not going to restore those children if you're not doing things God's way. Mm. You know, you must do it God's way. I am so grateful what God did for me to give me this company and bless me financially. I'm so grateful. I'm so thankful. But God wants to bless us in every area, physically, mentally. You should not be tormented. He wants to minister to your children. He wants your children to serve God. He's got a plan. And if I could, Pastor, I want to read one quick scripture. I know we've, we're limited on time here today. Mm. But in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, this is, my pastor has been speaking a lot on this, and we're talking about the coming of the Lord, and we know that Jesus is right at the door, and he wants you to be ready. He wants you to make heaven. He wants us all to make heaven. But it says, but relative to the coming of the Lord, the Messiah, our gathering together to meet him, we beg you, brethren, God is begging us here right now, not to allow your minds to be quickly unsettled. And how many know they can be unsettled with all uh, this Antichrist system ever warring against the will of God for our life? He said, don't be disturbed. Don't be disturbed by anything. Then it goes in verse 3, let no one deceive you. Don't let that man deceive you. Don't let that money deceive you. Take the job, take the relationship that God has for you and nothing else. Let nothing beguile you in any way. For that day will not come except the apostasy comes first unless the predicted great falling away of those who have professed to be Christians has come. The man of lawlessness is revealed. So, Pastor, I just want to close that we have got to hear the voice of God, and we do not want to be deceived in this hour. That's true. That's so true, Lee. Let me ask you, we just have a couple minutes left, but um, in those couple minutes, you're, you're talking about hearing the voice of God. You're yes. talking about people that have, um, perhaps uh, even as in your own story, they've, they've missed it a little bit. They've, got, they've missed the voice of God. They didn't wait on God. What practical steps can a person take uh, to get back on the trail of hearing the voice of God. Well, God has a plan for every single person. The devil has a plan, but God's plan is the one that you want. And every day, it's a decision to wake up and say, okay, God, I have truly messed up. I repent of my sins. Mm. I ask you, God, mm. to forgive me. Forgive me from the bottom of my heart. And let that work of thorough, thorough repentance be done in your heart. I mean, let that complete work of repentance be done mm. in your heart. Forgive every person that's hurt you. I've had uh, two girls steal over six, seven million dollars from me. I've had to forgive them and go on. I had a bad marriage. I've got to forgive and go on. And today is the day of salvation. Today is the day that I must hear God's voice moment by moment so that I can recover all that Satan has stolen from me. What store do I go to? What airplane do I get on? What phone call do I make? I need to not be driven out of controlling spirits, but submit my heart to God Almighty and watch, boom, the favor of God. That door opens, that door closes, but that door that God wants begins to open and God begins to restore everything that the canker worm and the pomegranate have stolen from me. He can do that for you. He's done that for me. 
over and over, and I'm in the process right now of recovering all, and I'll be praying for every single person listening because God wants them to recover all too. That's really good. I appreciate so much, uh, Lee, helping us uh, hear from your perspective how a person can go through tough times and you move forward in Christ, and God's favor has obviously been on you and your company, but I think he's also on your word and the things that you're sharing. Thank so you, Pastor. Thank if you are listening to us today and you're just really hearing the story that Lee Valentine is, is making clear to you, I just encourage you to stop, take a breath, think through these concepts that she's been sharing. that has been excellent things Thank that you, you've Pastor. been sharing. And look at what God may want to say to your life. There is a way to get back on track, and it starts with acknowledging that you missed it. Exactly. And follow through with godly sorrow and repentance to move forward. So let's pray together. Yes, thank you, Lord. Father God, I thank you for this time that yes. you brought us together. I thank you for this specific time of bringing Lee Valentine to this show right now and for the audience that's listening. I thank you, Father, that even the people that are falling and have fallen can rise up and can say, Oh God, I need you. I thank you, Father, God, that you thank listen you, God. Yes, to prayers God. like yes, that. God. You listen to prayers like that where people are sincere and they open up their heart and they say, Oh God, help me. And so, Father, yes, I Lord. thank you for that time. I thank you for each person right now that has fallen. I thank you for those that may not even be your children, Lord. And in this moment, Father, I ask that you would allow your spirit to bring to them a conviction that reaches out and accepts you, yes, Jesus, Father. as the payment for their sin. Lord, that they come and say, I receive you as my Lord, as my leader of my life, and I repent and I follow you, Lord Jesus. So God, we pray blessing yes, right Jesus. now upon each person, man, woman, child, teenager, married, divorced, single, it doesn't matter, Lord. You are the God of deliverance. You are the God of restoration. You are the God of favor. And you are doing that even now, Lord. So we come expectantly, anticipating your intervention in our life. And we bless you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, much for God being with us. You. We are so glad you could be Thank with us. So Praise the Lord. We're glad you're here. Yes, God bless you. This program has been brought to you through the prayers and contributions of our faithful partners throughout North America and the world.